be recording tonight and I am going to, whoop, that didn't do it. <laughs> Trying to get my speaker view and I, I say, wait, let me do this, hold on. Okay. Well, I want to welcome all of you to our Mission Possible call this evening. I am excited that you all have chosen to join us by your presence here. You're saying that your business is important to you and inspiring healthy living around the world is an important part of your mission and what you are about. And as a team, the Mission Possible team, every week when we come together, it is to remind us of our mission and what we're about. And I was reminded today of a statement that Jay Martin has said, our president has said so many times. Early on in my business career, he said, if you had a good week, the meeting needs you. And if you've had a bad week, you need the meeting. This is the meeting. We went to live meetings for a years and years and years today we're zooming in via coast to coast and all kinds of fun ways and options but we do need each other and community is important and we are unifying and simplifying our message and what we do as a team i'm just reminding you that we are establishing a solid customer base that is our goal to establish a solid customer base of 24 customers or trio orders which allows you to build a qualified business which is foundational for our income numbers and for building a business. And the second thing we do in unifying and simplifying our mission is to reach the top commission level. So I'm encouraging you guys to take note of that every single week when we talk about it. So tonight we're privileged to have a very special speaker with us. Karen Johnson is a national marketing director and recently, as many of you know, who were at conference, trained on the main stage at our conference and she did a phenomenal job and i'll give you a little uh, history on karen then i want to say something personally about her as well karen is a former and some of you may have seen this. she's a former division one athlete uh, from penn state university which is no small deal that's a big deal uh, for a full on out athlete in field hockey. I mean, my goodness, Karen, <laughs> that's spending some energy for sure. She was a, a U18 national US team member for field hockey. She is a former fitness trainer and a group trainer. And, and Karen has specialized in this area as working with prenatal and postnatal moms. And she's also, not only is she in, involved in all these other things, but she is a mom. She's got an eight-year-old, a beautiful six-year-old, beautiful children, eight, six, and two. And just personally, I, re I met Karen at our Whistler event, the elite trip that we were privileged to be sent on. Karen and I, Karen and I were on the shuttle from Seattle to wherever we went. <laughs> To Whistler. It was a it was a two and a half hour ride. So we got to have conversation and I just so enjoyed meeting her. But at the close of that time and we had a chance to meet on Sunday evening before we departed, Janet Black stepped in and said, I'm so glad that you two ladies are talking. Because certainly I've been in the business for 34 years, but Karen's more recent. But she said, Karen is the model, is the example for building the kind of business that we are looking for our, our leaders to build. Karen, that's a strong statement. And when I heard that, I knew that I definitely wanted you to come and share on our call this evening. So welcome, Karen. She's in the top right-hand side. And I'm just going to confess, I'm trying to figure out how to do speaker view, but so far I haven't got it figured out. So we'll keep working. <laughs> that's okay. Welcome, That's Karen. Right. Thank you so much. I, do you want me to just get started? Yes, I, I do. I'd love for you to I, take it away. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me on. Honestly, just hearing you talk kind of brings tears to my eyes a little bit because um, there are so many people in this business that I look up to. And it's people that have been in this business for so long that have really paved the way for someone like myself to be able to step in and feel like, you know, there is a path that we can all go on. But uh, 
I will start everything from my journey, my story, and just share with you what my last few years have looked like um, in terms of consistency and just really what I have zoned in on. And um, I might be seem like I'm looking up to my left-hand corner. I have notes on my right-hand side, but I have you guys in my left-hand corner, but I am trying to look directly at you, but I don't want to miss anything. And um, so I do have my notes out, but I really feel that the last few years of my business, um, I kind of coined the, the, the phrase of it's been the snowball effect. And one of the biggest reasons for that is I decided to partner with Juice Plus eight years ago. Uh, I was a first time mom. I was in my late twenties and I really envisioned this as being something that would grow alongside my fitness business, like Sharon had said, but I didn't have a big vision at the time. My, my real business baby was my fitness business. And I was first introduced to Juice Plus right when he was actually turning one, my son, Tony. And I knew looking at our lifestyle of, you know, being an, an athlete that, you know, had retired, really. Um, my husband played football also at Penn State. And I was looking at this very much from anyone could benefit from more fruits and vegetables. What I wasn't anticipating is the phone call that I received from my sponsor, Beth Leopold, to learn more about the business and the product. I wasn't expecting to really see the vision even bigger. Um, but as she shared with me, both made sense to me at the same time. So I was actually born really into this business by learning to share product and business at the same time. And I feel really, really fortunate for that because you just never know which door is going to make more sense to somebody or if they both just kind of align beautifully. So I learned very quickly to not only get myself on the product, but to teach others to do the same at you know, both product and business. And obviously that doesn't happen all the time, but what I have really shared over the years is the simplicity behind what we have. It's just fruits and vegetables. It makes sense. The business model is just as seamless. And as I really learned how to do that, um, that vision was certainly cast for me. So backing up a little bit, I had fast track to VF went to my very first conference. I was um, a nursing mom. I left my one-year-old at home, but my sponsor shared with me that if I was going to do anything or thought anything of this business, I should come to conference. And that was really where the vision was painted for me very quickly, just like many people. And I came back really excited, hair on fire, thinking to myself, gosh, this could be really that ticket for me to not just stay home with my babies until kindergarten, which was originally my plan all along, but it was, this could be so much more. And I'm so grateful for that first conference because I actually came back and a couple months, months later had reached the sales coordinator position in short order after we lost our health insurance for the first time. And I was actually getting ready to have my second child. And it was really at that point in time that I realized that the, deg the degree that I had from Penn State didn't matter. The degree that my husband had from Penn State didn't matter because life was happening around us and people were losing their jobs from underneath of them. And so I thought to myself, this business model is something that I could really, really embrace. And we did move um, into a new position for my husband. And about six months later, the exact same thing with a second company happened. And I put my foot down at that point in time. I like to say I drew the line in the sand and I envisioned our family as totally being in charge of the rest of our lives. And I made a decision that day that I was going to reach national marketing director. I made a decision that day that nothing was ever going to impact our lives like that again. And about 18 months later, we did. We reached National Marketing Director 24 Club. And the reason why I share that and share this vision so strongly is because I know that there are people out there that want more for their life, from their life, for their life. And it takes that switch of the mindset to say, I'm going to do this. And it just takes leaning in. And so the month that we actually moved to Columbus, Ohio, from Pennsylvania, it's a month that we reached national marketing director. And I was really excited, obviously, for that call, but I quickly realized that I was moving to a new state and I was leaving my team and everything that I had built in state college felt like it was kind of quickly 
moving away just as fast as I had built it. Obviously it wasn't, but in my mind, I wasn't, I didn't have access to my team anymore. And I wasn't going to be there physically. And I wasn't going to be present at the events that we used to do. And at that point I had really built my business to national marketing director by using three-way calls. However, definitely building for those in-person events that we would typically have two to three times a month. So I became a bit paralyzed, right? I became a little bit nervous on how am I going to rebuild this in, in Columbus. And there were a few things that happened in that process. But through that time frame of being a little bit paralyzed, I had to go back to the basics of how I really built this business to NMD. And that was getting involved with the community and plugging myself in. And so I had gone to my daughter's gymnastics class that I had signed her up for. And I met, that, I met one of my really good friends now. Uh, her name's Carly. And I had connected with her. We connected on social media and we virtually built our relationship over social media, which a lot of times we hear at this day and age. But again, the concepts remain the same. Like when it comes to relationship building, we would get together outside of the gym. We would do certain things. And that was really a huge piece for me moving into Columbus of recreating what I originally had thought that I, you know, could continue to, to do in, in, in Pennsylvania and that I was doing that in Columbus. And it all came back to some really specific things that I feel that anyone in their business at any position can create their snowball effect. So I had to get back to the basics of consistency, right? I was sharing with people around me. I was sharing the product. It was intertwining my business story. And at this point in time, my business story, I felt was stronger than ever because you know, we had lost our health insurance twice. And I was, you know, a mom of two at the time. And we moved to another state and the business is transferable, you know, it's transparent, you can move wherever. And so I felt like I had a really strong business story, but I wasn't being consistent with that sharing piece. And I also wasn't being consistent with my team. And that was like big piece for me to really consider, like, what am I spending my time on? You know, uh, am I feeding my team? Am I, am I feeding the teammates that are coming on? And that consistency piece continued to build and develop. And that was a real big piece for me to get that snowball really going again. And, you know, not only having events that were virtual, and I don't, I don't necessarily mean Facebook events. I'm not really I'm big into those, but I am talking Zoom events, you know, like sharing the product and sharing the business and, you know, kind of putting my own spin on like a Karen Jones event. Uh, and really making that a piece of it. But that was kind of what I consider like a micro activity. The macro activity was, you know, the in-person events and getting those butts and seats and the corporate events that were coming to Columbus, going back to the basics of that consistent piece of me showing up, me being there. Even if I didn't have team in Columbus, I still had to show and, mm -hmm. and fuel myself. And that's where that built and continued because then as team was developing, as I was being consistent and sharing, I was plugging them in. And that was something really, really crucial for me to, to think about. And my consistency with my upline support, you know, am I bouncing ideas off of them and strategizing, you know, where that consistency was coming into play. And another big piece for me was my mindset you know, what am I fueling myself with every day? What am I telling myself? Uh, I really had to have a bigger presence, I felt, not only in my own personal life, but also for my team. And I think I shared from main stage that I, I really feel that whatever's happening in your personal life always kind of comes out in your business. And when we had mer first moved to Columbus, we had just built our first home. We had never built a home before we were in not a great area of town in Columbus that we weren't really excited about, but it was a really quick move and transition. And I realized that all of these things were playing a factor into how I was running my business. I was more really, really concerned what was happening there instead of really focusing on how I could keep growing and plugging in. So that mindset, that shift was really huge for me um, to constantly tap into how I can be better, how I'm showing up, you know, um, physical presence for me was huge because I, I, I wanted to make sure that I was working out and fueling myself well with food and drinking my water. And all of that was a huge effect in my mindset and just what I was waking up to every single day and how I wanted to be. So I had to make a real big shift with that. And I think one of the big things is too, is that 
I believed so much in my team that I didn't have a lot of belief in myself. And so when I looked at these beautiful teammates that were developing in my, in my business, I'm like, they're looking up to me to, to really show up. And that's really where a huge shift for me happened to continue to show up the way I would want someone to show up for me. And so that's what I continued to work on. I had to work on myself a, a lot when it comes to that. Um, another big piece too of, of me moving forward, um, you know, not only from NMD, but through club levels is just that connection in general, not only connection to my upline, which I had shared, but also to my team and how I was supporting them. And I really kind of had a shift in thinking of no person left behind, no teammate left behind. And a lot of that has come through like the Brave Leaders program. But I, I had to really embrace that because I realized that I really was that dot to kind of connect all the pieces. And of course, there's leaders in between, but teams fall out sometimes and leaders fall out sometimes. And I had to really step in and support these individuals. And I needed to make sure that my connection was so on point when it came to all of that. And I really created a culture within our team that was fun and just dedicated to the mission just like Sharon was you know saying in the beginning like what our mission was and I got back to that gratitude piece of what we do as a company and a mission and that was really really huge from that connection point I started to show up differently for my team and going live on my team Facebook page and you know just giving nuggets here and there that was fueling and feeding my team throughout the week that I was not doing before you know I kind of felt like things were a little bit stagnant but really the energy had to be created for me from me like people were looking for that energy from me so I had to really get back to that connection piece um one big thing that was a big shift for me too is not only how I was showing up for my team but also myself in terms of what I was doing to be putting myself first so that I could take care of everyone else take care of the kids and take care of my family and then in turn, obviously, take care of my team. So just that showing up piece and what that looks like for me might look, might look different for other people, but I really had to tune into that and tap into that. One big thing, too, that I had to really assess was what I commit to. What am I saying yes to? And is it fueling myself to fuel my team? Is it fueling my business? Or is it busy work? Or is it something that's going to take me time to you know maybe reinvent the wheel and I I I just I feel really fortunate right just like all of you we have systems that are already in place that we don't have to reinvent the wheel and that's the beautiful piece behind it and that was a big thing for me that I had to think what am I committing to and I had to do a real hard look at that because if it wasn't serving anyone that was going to move their business forward I really had to say no and that was challenging but at the end of the day it helped create time and flexibility and energy for me to go towards the things in our business that are those money-making activities you know such as the events that we do virtually and the events that we do in person like those were all things that I really wanted to focus on and get back to that so obviously going into all of that was the focus and the energy, it really transformed, you know, what I was focusing on, the energy that I was putting in, it transformed how I was feeling because I realized the team was, you know, fueling that and they were getting excited. And that's really where everything started to continue to go because I had gone to work on myself so much that I was showing up differently for everyone else. And this created that real piece of ownership around my business. And I realized my sponsor a year, about a year ago for around Christmas had offered us the opportunity to pick out, um, it's called a My Intent bracelet. So My Intent. And with those bracelets, you can put any sort of word on it. And I was at a place in my business in Columbus, you know, kind of new here that I realized I wasn't owning my business like I really could. And I wanted to do that. I didn't want to rely on anyone, right? If it's to be, it's up to me. It's kind of the mindset that I had in terms of moving forward. And so those words that I put on my bracelet were ownership 5075. And ownership's pretty self-explanatory, but the 5075 was, okay, Karen, what's this? 
Well, to me, what that meant was I didn't want to be stuck anymore in my business. I wanted to move to 50 Club. I wanted to move to 75 and onward. And so I looked at that bracelet every single day that I got up. It was on my, on my wrist every single day. And at the end of that year, we had reached 50 Club. And I'm a huge believer in that shift in mindset and the visualization and what that energy creates. And it just creates that, that, that focus of helping others and serving others and having that servant heart leadership. And that's what still to this day excites me so much is to be able to help others experience what their best self looks like. And I'm so grateful to have these experiences where I felt in rust and such, because I feel like I can mentor my team, which I couldn't do before, but it was because I, I really went to, to work on myself. And one of the big things with that was, you know, transitioning into stronger leadership. Um, I started to dive into more books. And I started to really get serious when it came to the Brene Brown Brave Leaders. And through the whole process of doing that, I realized there were things already in my life that had held me back from being the best that I could be. And to make a long story short, I had really lived my whole life with thinking that I was pretty average. It was okay to be average, kind of fly under the radar. I had shared that a little bit from main stage too. But what I realized what that was doing to myself is I was, I was making myself live smaller than I needed to. And I feel that it's okay to own into and, and fall into the best version of yourself. And that is not at all being, you know, egotistical or whatever. It's just embracing who you were born to be. Mm-hmm. And I feel that God has put me in a place to be able to accept that it's okay to shine and be you know, that light that people are looking for, because I'm going to help them create that for themselves. And I feel so passionate about that. And if you would have asked me eight years ago, if I would ever be doing this, I literally was the person that when people came into the elevator, I looked at the ground. I mean, I was that shy of an individual. And um, this business has just created uh, just such a powerful, amazing force in my life that I just, I love to give back to that and help others create that same vision for themselves. And that leadership piece was definitely a big, big piece of it. So it, this whole entire process has created me to be able to show up differently for everyone in my life and my family. And the specifics and the basics of this business are sharing the product, sharing the business, intertwining both where you can, and plugging into every single opportunity to learn and to grow and just be the best person that you can be. And I, I feel really, really grateful that I have been able to embrace the connection of three-way calls to build my business. But I also really respect that not everyone's business looks like that and every area is a little bit different. And so for what I teach is like a really happy balance of everything. And I love that. And I always love to ask people, you know, what's really worked for us is when somebody new comes into the business and they want to lift off, I always ask them like what they love to do. Because if somebody really loves to be in front of the room, I'm certainly not going to offer them a virtual event. I could, but I want to, I want them to feel like they're winning at what they're doing. And if they love that, that's really what I'm going to kind of share with them to do. And so I have a really good mix of everything. We have some pockets of individuals across the country that just do three-way calls. And then we have some people that are just totally building for in-person events. And I love to teach all the different spectrums because you just never know where that happy balance is going to come in for someone. And when I had first moved to the Columbus area, when I had built in State College, we didn't have corporate events. I mean, the area was so untapped. We didn't have corporate events. The very first person that ever came out was Ron Watkins, and it was when I was a senior sales coordinator. So I had really just built my business off of three-way calls, but I was significantly changed by that in-person piece of it, learning how to invite and what to say and getting people there because it created that huge, huge vision. So we have a happy balance of everything. Of course, we have systems in place when you know, people really fast track to DF and we go into coaching and such, but 
what's really working for us is a really nice balance of everything, but making sure for sure that we're building in between the goalposts we call that conference to conference, and then plugging people into those micro activities through the year. So that's what's really, really worked for us. So I'm, um, you know, now a mom of three, my, my son, Declan, uh, is two now and we just have such incredible product stories when it comes to everything that we've experienced you know we have um only had well visits and it's just been amazing and my youngest son was actually born and he was a NICU baby he was born five weeks early but he had what was called intrauterine growth restriction which basically means I stopped growing <laughs> which means he stopped growing my belly wasn't growing anymore and he was born totally healthy with a juice plus baby no oxygen, no nothing. So when it comes to this product, I've got those amazing product testimonies that I can share, but I'm so passionate about, passionate about the ins and the outs of this business that honestly, just like I did tonight, which I didn't even realize, I kind of share that product piece last because I want people to really see what's at their fingertips with this business. So what we see for our vision now for our family, um, we just built our dream home. We built our second home in Columbus. Uh, my husband has a great job, but you know what? It, he works weekends and we're ready to really bring him home. And um, we have this beautiful pool that we put in over the summer and it's literally all been fueled by this business. And it's not obviously just what we've been able to, you know, have from a perspective that we never thought we could have before, but it's about creating memories for our kids and really sharing with people that I didn't see this necessarily in the beginning, but for me to be able to experience this and pass this on and create this legacy. And it's just, I'm so incredibly grateful. And I hope I gave you guys some good content tonight, but you know, our vision is to bring my husband home and just really continue to pass the torch of this business and just embrace what we all have at our fingertips. And, um, you know, that's really what I wanted to share tonight. And hopefully my husband will be 40 by the time that he retires into this business. He's brand new into the business, VF going sales coordinator. And I'm so incredibly dedicated to this mission. So Sharon, I appreciate you. And I, I hope I shared some good content. And I'm, I'm open to answer questions or whatever. Um, but I just appreciate you so much. Oh, Karen, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have taken notes upon notes upon notes. You have said some very valuable, profound things. So I can only, when, I, when you talk about going back to the basics, and that is always just a good direction for everybody, and using a mix of all the resources that we have, not just the pendulum over here on one side or the other, but using a balance of everything, of connection calls and events and live events and, and um, just, you know, online events. Those are all resources and we need to be utilizing them. So I am thrilled. I loved our connection when we were in Whistler. We had a great time visiting on our way. It was Vancouver that we flew in and, and drove to Whistler. But certainly, um, and one thing you did say, you, know, you were building that you were doing live events two to three a month. And I think that is a key piece that people often fail that they can do, we can do an event here, maybe three months later. But if you really want to build a significant duplicatable snowball effect business, that's two to three events a month that you're yeah. participating in. Yes. And they were so simple too. Honestly, they were the same when we were really building. It was wine and wellness at a local spa. And we stayed consistent with that because people loved it. So yeah, I mean, you can always mix it up, but it was like the bread and butter for us was that. I don't know. It just really it was just so fun. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, I want to thank you. And I'm going to take this off of gallery view so everybody can thank you. And we'll open it up. I think I can take this off the gallery view. I don't know. Let's go this. Okay, I did it. Is <laughs> this been fun or what tonight to have Karen on our call? And I know that you guys want to just maybe give a big hand clap and say thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Karen. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Karen. Karen. We will be welcome. welcome. Great. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate all of you. Have a great night. Thanks, Karen. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Love you guys.